I'm happy to be doing another video, my first one in a really long while. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pin bag for all of your pins while you're at the park. First, I have an announcement or a surprise to share with you all. So this is my excuse why it took so long for me to do another video. I was making this little one. This is baby Harper. Harper, say hi! The newest generation of Disney fans here. Yeah, in our little mini mouse outfit. All right, anyway, since I've done my introduction, you ready to get started, Harper? You want to show them how to make the little bag? Let's do it. Here's a list of the items you'll be needing. You'll need an Eda bag. Um, please see the link in the description. It's two cork boards, preferably thin, because we're going to glue them together. Felt fabric, and you'll want the colors hot pink, light pink, yellow, black, and white. You'll need thread, and you'll need the thread to be the matching colors of all of that fabric above. And then you'll need things like scissors um, and a marker and a needle and a hot glue gun. The first step is to lay the backpack face down and then with some sort of writing utensil like a sharpie you're going to trace the outside of the backpack um, on the cork board so you know where the edges are. And after you're done tracing, you're going to cut out um, that outline there, like so. After you're done cutting it out, sometimes it's going to be a little bit too large um, because you want to make sure that it fits inside of the backpack. So it's going to have to be a little bit smaller than your outline, which if you take into account while you're cutting in the first place, you don't have to go through this stuff. But as you can see here, I'm kind of trimming down the excess um, cork board so it can fit inside of the bag. Uh, well, and if you don't do this step, if you don't cut a little bit smaller, um, it's going to be really hard to fit in there, especially with the excess um, space it will take up when you add the fabric around the edges. That's going to add to the bulkiness and it won't be able to fit very well unless you um, slim down the sides a little bit. And then once you're done, make sure to check that it will um, fit inside of your bag um, a little bit loosely, not too loose, but also not too snug. Um, you want just kind of the perfect fit there. After you're done checking that, you're going to want to trace the cork board um, cutout that you just did on another piece of cork board um, so that you have enough room for your pins to go through because at least my cork board was a little bit too thin and I wanted to make sure that there was enough stability there. So I'm going to trace the outline there and we're going to cut it out like so. When we're done cutting out, it out, we're going to use the hot glue gun to glue these two sides together so you have an extra thick cork board that you were both able to cut and it's not too thin for your pins. Um, so it will look pretty good in that backpack. Here I'm just, just doing some more trimming um, so that both of the cork boards are somewhat even with one another. So now we're going to trace the outline of the uh, cork board so that you're going to have that fabric covering on it. Um, keep in mind that this fabric, the fleece, is pretty stretchy so you don't really need to add too much excess fabric. If you do, then again it's going to be too bulky uh, with the seams. 
So here I'm just tracing the outline of the cork board with my Sharpie. Then you're going to cut along that outline that you made uh, so that you have a nice uh, outside portion for your cork board. You're going to put that cork board in that uh, pink fabric and you're going to tuck it around a little bit on the edges and then just sew a seam across um, each of those. So you're just going to sew one side to the other. It's pretty stretchy fabric so it's not too hard to do. I do apologize, it's pretty difficult for you to see um, my sewing here just because of the camera angle. So it looks like I didn't save um, this video or turn on the camera, but what I did next was use that light pink fabric to make an outline um, of a kind of like the face of the Cheshire Cat, like the lips area. So you'll see that later on. And then I traced that after I cut it out of that, that um, pink fleece, I traced it on this white fleece uh, so I got an idea of how big it was so I could then trace an outline of um, where the, what the teeth would look like. So I wanted to make sure it was proportional, that's why I drew the outline of the kind of like mouth lips area and then put the, um, the teeth in the middle. And so after I traced it out, you can see me cutting it. The next step is to use that kind of creamish yellow colored uh, felt to make the Cheshire Cat eyes. So you're going to just um, be making two circles essentially. You can use something to trace an outline if you're not very good at drawing circles um, or you can just do it freehand and kind of trim up the excess if you need. You'll want to use the black fabric to make some eyebrows. So just, you know, cut out some semi-circles. Um, you can make it a little bit um, bigger on one side if you want. I tried to double the fabric again, as you can see, so that the eyebrows would be a little bit more symmetrical. And I just kept trimming down the excess so that I got, you know, eyebrows that looked all right and proportional to the eyes. All right, now you want to make the nose for the Cheshire Cat. It's a little bit circular and um, kind of mixed between an oval and a triangle. Now here you can see me drawing something that's more of a shape of a triangle. I actually went back after this, um, I was done filming this whole thing and made a different nose because it looked too pig-like to me. So you'll see it at the end. It's just a little bit more circular or uh, rather oval. So um, here you're going to see a different nose and throughout the video, but at the end you're going to see a different product altogether. I just took the nose off and sewed another one on, but it's the same steps that I'm doing here. So I traced it on that pink felt and then I cut it out. So you're going to want to make little black dots with the fabric for the Cheshire Cat's eyes pupils. Um, so you can see that here. You also want to make two nostrils for the Cheshire Cat um, with the black felt. Alright, so you're going to want to sew those pupils onto the um, yellow fabric eyeball. So you're just going to use, um, I use black thread, that way you couldn't see it. So you see me sewing those on right there. And you also want to sew those two little nostrils on the nose. So I wanted to make a little black outline around the teeth um, just because, I don't know, it looked better to me. Um, but I tried with a permanent marker and it didn't really look right on that white fabric. So, and neither did um, thread. So what I did was cut out um, the black felt just a little bit extra. Um, you know, on top of the teeth. So I wanted there to be just a little slim line, um, just as kind of an outline, to make it stand out a little bit more. So here I am cutting it out using those teeth as a, as a guide as I cut. You also cut a little bit of that black felt so that you can have little outlines for the grin. 
So two little um, kind of crescent shapes. The next step is to sew the teeth on that black background so that it's stable. They're stable on top of each other. The next thing I did was um, use thread to make teeth on that white uh, background so it looks more like that big grin. So I just took the thread and went up and across, up and over, using uh, pinning it against that black background. So I apologize that you can't really see it too well. Um, I didn't realize the camera was off angle here, but um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just keep, you know, threading it on through. And try and make the teeth as even as you can. So here I'm just pinning that um, grin on the mouth background so that I can sew it on just how I want it. Um, and then I'm just going to use some thread to sew it right on there. And the next thing you'll want to do is um, sew that those little crescent, um, you know, cheek marks on the ends of each of the smiles. So this one's pretty delicate. You just need a few um, thread um, stitches in there. And now you can arrange all of the pieces on your um, cork board. See what um, proportions you want. And now you'll want to sew that um, that mouth par portion onto the actual uh, fabric that's on the cork board. So you're just going to go through the fabric, not through the cork board. So you have to lift it up a little bit with a pinch and then poke it through as much as you can um, through those two layers um, and you the good the important part here is to have thread that is of similar color um, and you try and put the thread through so there's very 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 small uh, stitches so you can't see it as well um, it's a little bit less visible after you're done with that, you can use the needle to kind of fluff the felt fabric where the um, stitches are to kind of cover up those stitches a little bit better because otherwise they kind of um, look tucked in from that thread, if that makes any sense. Um, so I just kind of scratched a little bit at the surface there to fluff it up. Now I'm going to sew on the nose, and again, um, remember this nose isn't the final product, um, but the steps are the same, so you just use a different um, darker color thread um, that matches a little bit better, and you go on through, same thing with the mouth, um, and sew that sucker on. You'll repeat that process that you just did for the nose and the mouth with the eyes, but now with yellow thread. And then you're going to want to do the same thing um, and sew on those uh, eyebrows. So some things that I did not film but that I did do after this video to make it look more cat-like was to add some whiskers, which all I did was take some black thread, made three whiskers on each side, just um, pulling it through that fabric uh, with a needle and then and then knotting it so you can see that there, and then made um, little um, kind of whisker marks that cats have, those um, little dots you can see, so I made little knots, um, three on each side, so you can see that there. And then after you're done, you can um, put a little bit of uh, paper, like I did, that says keep and trade on the bottom. I like that so that when I'm walking around the park, I can show off my pins. I can um, show off the ones I want to keep, but then also I have some traders on there. And you can just go on and stick those pins on there, put it right in your bag, and there you have it. You have a bag to carry around your pins. Here's the final product. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please shoot me um, you know, a comment, and I would be happy to answer. I know I didn't do a great job with the film um, in this video with the filming. Um, but I will try to do better next time, and I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you for watching.